Steven and I have said in a lot of our different videos, and a lot of, I feel like, our keys to success are because we're able to get away from people and the crowds to find fish that are unpressured. We've got our kind of whitewater raft situation set up. So they're easy, they're versatile, we can take them anywhere. We have been talking about a couple of different trips that we want to go do where we can't bring a boat that are really only accessible by four-wheel drive vehicles that I personally am not going to drive my daily driver down. So we started searching. I was like, man, it would be really cool to do a video on like a budget build. Not like it's budget that we use like the cheapest parts we could find, but budget in the fact that we have a really cool, functioning, off-roadable truck that can get us, I mean, basically anywhere. Once, once I'd kind of gotten this approved with Steven and we got a budget put together, I was hitting Colby up pretty much every day with a couple of listings. All of a sudden, one night, I am in Alabama with Steven and Colby hits me up and he's like, holy shit, this is it. I click it and I go, holy shit, this is it. The amazing Isuzu Trooper. It has a powerful fuel injected engine, four wheel drive. I'm not really a station wagon kind of guy. Colby, tell us a little bit from that point, I get home and I'm like, okay, we're going to work because we're going to shoot this film coming up here. We had, we had Brent, we had you guys on all on the docket to come out here to shoot this thing. So what did we do to get it ready for this trip? We get this thing back to Adam's place and while we did have a good service history, it had some bugs here and there. It was having some idling problems, which it's a 91. It's got a intake manifold on it. So it's... It's old school tech, but pretty easy to figure out. We got it running right. We we got some work into it, got the thing so it, it idled correctly. We felt like we could, as is, drive it down the road and not have to worry about being towed somewhere. But we still had a lot to do before we took this thing on our first fly fishing trip. Just to show you how bad this old suspension was, we've got Colby's got a little test for us. <laughs> All right, guys, we finally finished up with the lift. Suspension feels a lot better. The truck definitely sits a lot higher, which is awesome. So, uh, anyways, here's the aftermath of uh, doing the lift kit. Uh, we got a little more work to do. We just got to kind of get it polished up. We've got to get the roof rack and brush guard done. Amazing Isuzu Trooper. It has a powerful fuel injected engine, four wheel drive, power steering, and four wheel disc brakes, all standard. Yet it's over $1,000 less than Jeep Cherokee, Bronco 2, and S10 Blazer. And if you buy a Trooper now, we'll throw in this attractive car cover. Act now and get a $750 factory rebate available on all Troopers 2 or 4 door. For those of you that are hanging on that are our fly fishing crew, we will be going through all of the fly fishing stuff here in just a couple minutes. Yeah, I mean, that's, oh, that, that's, yeah, that's, a good that's the point. thing to remember is that while this is like the, the cool overland off-road vehicle, it's, it's purpose-built to take us fly fishing, right? That's like, what it's for. Morning. 
morning of day zero the packing has begun look at that sexy baby we've got a few things thrown up on there that sick brush guard fabbed up a nice little roof rack as well and got some attachments on the back wheel there so we've got everything on the truck that we're gonna do we just need to work on packing so we've got our super versatile roof rack here um, we've got one of our Yeti dry bags on this side and a larger Sims dry bag on the other. We're going to be able to utilize uh, stacking a lot of storage stuff up there, stuff that doesn't matter as much if it gets, uh, you know, kind of maybe dinged up. Obviously, a little more of the valuable stuff is going to be in the bed of the truck. Um, so we're going to start packing some stuff up there working this way we did get one of these spare tire covers um, that kind of doubles as extra storage in a bag back here we think that's going to be super helpful for our waders so we're going to make sure our waders and boots and probably we're going to bring a little bit of local firewood as well with us so hopefully we'll be able to get all of that in here save us some extra space inside and keep these super dirty fishing boots away from the carpet and the nice stuff we'll try to tr keep the truck from getting as muddy as we can Hey there, welcome back to another great edition of Carpool Karaoke. I like the way you... <laughs> Adam's not dealing no, that. We're right, not doing enough. that. All right, well, we're off. All right. Is well, Zoo Film 1? Begins. Got to see how, see how it does. Hopefully we make it all the way up and back all in one piece. Headed north from Salt Lake here. Uh, Going to learn us a few things about overlanding and uh, go catch a few fish while we're up there. So we'll see you guys out there. into this canyon area so we pulled over to uh have a look before we drove up in there but this is a uh super cool canyon so we're gonna be headed back this way but wanted to uh saw this little pull off right up here so a little sightseeing area so we wanted to check it out before we drove it up oh man it's beautiful dude and that looks absolutely fishy so i think we're on the right track here using the uh overlanding vehicle to kind of get away from everybody you know you're not getting over here with your four-door sedan so we got that going for us uh, but I'm stoked. Um, water looks juicy. There's nobody out here fishing it. And so I I'm hoping we're on the right track and hoping we can get some fish later. So our friends over at Bison Gear got us some accessory mounts for our spare tire. And uh, our Azuzu obviously has our spare tire mounted here on the rear door. So on this side, I've got some a gas and water can mounted over here on this side we actually have steps so instead of doing a whole rear ladder setup this was a much much cheaper option to be able to access the roof rack with these steps how's she running it's running good temperatures hasn't uh hasn't changed well, obviously our idle issue is fixed with our check engine light from some of the uh, maintenance that we did on it and uh, man, this new suspension has been great on these backcountry roads. We would not have rolled anywhere had we not put lights on that thing. Mm -hmm. The headlights were like, you would turn them on and you'd be like, are they on? It, it was like it broke physics almost like how little it was like it took away light speed the the speed of light travels slower out of an azuzu <laughs> <laughs> yeah we, we've got a we've got a right hand turn up here um we're gonna get set up you're gonna go around the corner to the right that's out of frame we got the history of the vehicle let's move on to this trip specifically this is the shakedown trip for the azuzu Yes, we know we, we're calling it overlanding, and what we're doing here is not 
rock crawling super gnarly. This is the shakedown. We're trying to figure out what stuff we missed after driving it around Salt Lake. Make sure it's reliable before we go do anything too crazy. And we may or may not have come to a cool cutthroat fishery. All right, so day two, uh, we're gonna go four wheeling. We got uh, a couple cool trails on our way to our fishing spot. Uh, we obviously rolled in pretty late last night, so it was nice to just crash, get our stuff set up. And uh, now this morning, we've got a trail that we're gonna drive up into this canyon. So uh, we're pretty excited about it. There we go. There we have it. All right, folks, if you're watching at home, Woo! always drop it in four low with your lockers on. Is that is that technical jargon? Good yeah, enough? that was good. All right, we're learning, boys. <laughs> All right. Walking up to the river, all we see is a bunch of grasshoppers. I mean, every step you're kicking up another five grasshoppers. So what fly did you choose? Uh, so we pinned an egg. <laughs> <laughs> Making an egg. So, <laughs> so Colby and I ran up here uh, a couple weeks ago to kind of check the area out, kind of get a game plan together for the overlanding and the fly fishing kind of see how it was going so uh we we have a fly that we've been kind of dialing in for the past few years um believe it or not it's called the hudson hopper we fished this fly and it was really good. we never changed we, we were never up changed. here all day and never switched flies and that's exactly what we did today <laughs> oh yeah which was awesome so we get here and it is like there is not much for current. There, there are a few little currents and maybe a few pockets, but it is generally slow and the same current all the way across the river. I mean, it is like over your head, grass and brush, or you're standing in the river. And there are trees lining the entirety of both sides. God damn, Steve. I'm just terrible. I know. Can you see that or no? Oh, yep. He's right where I thought he was. Did someone bring the net? I need the net. Oh, Woo! <laughs> yeah. Ah, there we go. Nice. On the board? Where was he at? Sitting the tail out there? He was in the left edge, right at the front. That tail out there. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna make this cast. And as soon as I made it, I was like, Brent can't see that, can you? And Brent goes, no. Sucked it. Well, uh, this spot is kind of known for cutthroat trout, but just like a lot of cutthroat trout fisheries, there's a lot of rainbows in there too. Uh, obviously we just found a rainbow. Um, they were sitting right kind of where we thought they would be today. Uh, the last time we scoped this out uh, was a uh, little bit deeper pockets, slower moving water. And uh, we saw a lot of grasshoppers as we were walking in, which was primo. Uh, it's still hopper season, which is one of the reasons we decided to do this shoot uh, this time of year. 
as we were walking through this field right here, I mean, hoppers were just going everywhere. So uh, we put on a grasshopper and I mean, first really good hole we got to had that fish. So hopefully we can find some more holes that look like this and uh, we'd love to catch a cutthroat show you guys. So uh, there you are. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Good? Yep. <laughs> oh. We're, we're walking up to the river. There's a fence crossing. I get the camera out. I'm like, oh, this would be nice. It'll, like, kind of lead us to the river. I start filming Adam climbing a ladder to cross a barbed wire fence. And, um, Steven's standing there holding all the crap that I gave him because I had to hold the camera. And Adam takes one step on the on the ladder, kind of gives it a little shimmy side to side, and he's like, kind of testing it. And he goes, he goes one more step, and he goes, "Oh shit, this thing's kind of wobbly." He's like in the back of his head, but he verbalizes, "Oh shit." One more step, he he's now straddling a the A-frame fence, a barbed wire fence, over a barbed wire fence, <laughs> and he starts he starts going, "Oh." Oh, oh, oh shit. Uh oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. oh <laughs> Yep. <laughs> it just keeps escalating into this. Steven and I are standing there watching this full unfold not even five feet away. We could have easily grabbed the ladder and saved Adam. It was like in slow-mo. It was just like, just slowly starts tipping. And I'm just like, oh, Adam just, Adam just fucking with us. Like, he's hamming it up yeah. for the camera. We thought yeah. he's playing this thing up. Oh, no. <laughs> he's going down. <laughs> and I fell probably eight feet off a ladder today. Straight, you dodged the barbed wire and Impressive. the post, but you landed straight on your ass <laughs> slash back. Slash drone. Slash drone. So now we are out of a drone. Now we're droneless. <laughs> are you okay first off? We're yeah. good. You're good. <laughs> yep. Yep. Freaking grind. We finally got up to some area where there's a little more current, and uh, second cast in, freaking finally pinned a pinned a good fish and Absolutely uh, crushed it. So an awesome Snake River cut uh, came up and chomped it, which was super cool to see. Very different than the trout we caught earlier today. Um, obviously that rainbow trout. So uh, really cool to catch a native species. I mean, that fish is from this area. So that's really cool to see. So we just got back from a great day of fishing and to celebrate, we're going to make a really good camp dinner. We're gonna do some bacon cheeseburgers on our new jet boil Genesis system. While Steve, we're gonna let him handle corn on the cob on our campfire. So let's get to it. I like to be able to at least control one good thing about the day. I don't want to. I don't want to come back and eat 
a sandwich at the end of the day. Like, I want to come back and have, like, a good meal, be able to hang out. It is about the fishing. It is, it is nice to get out here and have fun doing that. But just being able to hang out around the campfire, drink a couple beers, cook a good meal, and just hang out and just shoot the shit. I mean, that's what it's about. It's so much, so relaxing, so nice. I mean, you don't get that back home that often. How far up from the truck did you go? Uh, maybe two, three hundred yards. Not too far. Back home, our rivers are getting more and more pressured. Uh, you know, a lot of it's the plastic catch, but at the same time, you know, there's a lot more fishermen there. And so we're having to think of more, you know, a lot of different tricks, little variations on our flies, little things that we're having to do to get these fish to commit. And even when they do, they come out in more or less a lot more cautious and hesitant to take it. We're out here, you get that cast and you see that hole, you're like, that fish is going to come out here and he's going to kill it. And, and that's just something that I don't get a lot back home. How many fishermen have you seen or fisherwomen have you seen today? Or fishing or driving? Days? Because driving, fishing. it was two. Fishing, it was zero. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. You covered both. <laughs> Steven and I have said in a lot of our different videos, and a lot of, I feel like, our keys to success are because we're able to get away from people and the crowds. That was kind of a little bit of the behind the scenes of what we wanted this Isuzu to be able to do. We wanted to be able to drive up here in the middle of nowhere where there's nobody else around to be able to find these fish that are very unpressured. Yeah. It's another bow. Oh. Man, these kingfish are hooked, dude. Get the job done. <laughs> well, we feel like we've accomplished our goal. We've shaken down the Isuzu, we've got a list of things that need to be get fixed, and we caught some cool fish. It was a little bit of a grind for that cutthroat, but we did catch the cutthroat that we were after. Other than that, man, I think it did exactly what we wanted it to do. It got us away from people, got us off the beaten path. I'm looking forward to our next epic adventure. Uh, this thing outperformed every expectation I had, uh, so there's nothing really else I can add. Um, any final words, Adam? And if you've liked any of the shirts that you've seen us wearing, all of these shirts are available at bluelineflies.com. Go check us out, the link is below. And also, if you really like this content, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel, as well as if you wanna see some other cool adventures or you have some suggestions on upgrades you wanna see on the Zuzu, drop it in our DMs and let us know what you wanna see. Like this episode and want to help support BLC's Project Azuzu? 100% of the profits from the Azuzu gear go straight back into producing more projects and future episodes. F that was good. Did you hear that? That was really good. <laughs> <laughs>